Hey and welcome back to the channel. My name is Gary. I'm a cybersecurity professional by day. Notes. Let's talk about notes. I have got so many notebooks and so many real books with cyber notes in them. And when I say cyber notes, what I mean is offensive security notes. So notes around hacking. Pen testers notes, red teamers notes, whatever you want to call them. Usually what I do is I put them all into Gitbook. I have a video on the channel here, I'll put a link below, where I talk about how I use Gitbook to manage all of my notes. And it's great, honestly, I can't imagine using anything else. I recently came across a plugin. Day to day I use Safari because I'm on Mac OS, so I don't use lots of plugins. Chrome and Firefox have a plugin available called Hack Tools and it's super useful. Honestly, I am so disappointed I never <laughs> find this sooner. So that's why I'm going to share it with you and I'm going to show you it right now. So here it is. This is Hack Tools on GitHub made available by Last CC. Cool avatar. Very cool. Got their LinkedIn, got their YouTube, cybersecurity student. I love that. So cybersecurity student makes a cool project and then pros end up using it. Perfect for the resume. There's all the instructions here to how to install it, build it, support it. And you get a bit of a preview here as to what it does. And this is what I'm going to show you right now. So I've already got it installed, but let's just click here. This is what it looks like. And where it says remove from Chrome, you'll see add to Chrome or install on Chrome. So that's how you get it. And once you get it, this is what it looks like. The first thing you get here is an offline markdown editor. Markdown is a really cool little way of keeping text documents and making them look rich. So we can put in a title one called please subscribe and you can see on the right, we get the title and the line, and then this is fun. We can add heading three, and you get a smaller heading. So you can keep some rough pen testy type notes as you go along. Maybe you want to put some credentials in here or whatever. It's just a little scratch pad, nothing permanent. Next up is the reverse shell page. So let's say we want to uh, do a reverse shell. We put in the IP address that we want here and we give it the port number. No need to change that one. Leet is the only port number to use. And you can change your different shell configuration. So if it's a PowerShell, you can click that. And when you hit copy, it pastes it to the clipboard. And if I just open up a new window here and click paste, you can see PowerShell. Maybe I'll put it here. There you go. PowerShell dash I out to dev TCP creates a folder in the port. So yeah, it, it works. And we can expand all these out and see them all line by line, exactly what they look like. If I change it and put it to port elite, then you can see it changes it here. And if I change this to be home, there you go updates it in real time. Really cool. And this is a theme that you'll see throughout the tool. As you fill out these boxes, it populates the content in the query or the string. PHP reverse shells are up next. So this one's from Pentest Monkey's reverse shell, infamous reverse shell written in PHP. We can view the source code. You can see here, these two lines are the lines that we need to change. And if we change them to be, I don't know, 250, there we go. You can see it's updated it. So it really works. And we just download it or we copy it and we're all set. Then whenever you've uploaded the payload, you can use the command here to actually trigger it to do things like ls-la and list out the contents of a directory. And the story goes on and on. Next one, spawning a TTY shell I type this in all the time and I end up on a box and I don't have a really good shell. I learned this from IPSEC over on Hack the Box and it works. And I have all these commands written into my personal Gitbook, but now that I know they're here, 
I'll just be able to open up this little extension and just pinch them right from here super quick. Probably quicker than using Gitbook to do it. Next up, we've got uh, some Linux commands that are useful just for penetration testing in general. Uh, most of us know a lot of these commands, but do we know them off the top of our head? Probably not. So it's handy just to be able to copy these and paste them in. Kernel version enumeration, environmental variables, all the things that you could want to know. Same deal with PowerShell. So big long list of system enumeration commands here for PowerShell. Really, really cool. File transfers. So you put in your IP address and your port, the output file name, we'll just call it output.txt, and the URL, garyruddle.com slash favicon.ico, and there it is. You run that and you'll end up with output.txt, and it gives you all the different methods, fileless methods, invoke web request, SNB, FTP, comprehensive. Next up is LFI, which is local file inclusion. Basically, uh, someone hasn't done a very good job of securing the web server and you're able to read files that you shouldn't be able to read. For example, the Etsy password file, and that's the command for it there. Doesn't always work, it has to be on the right web server. These are really, really useful commands to have all in one simple place. Cross-site scripting attacks, SQL injection attacks, data encoding. This one's a little bit like a dumbed down version of CyberChef. If you haven't used CyberChef, I'll put a link in the description. Really fun tool. I believe it's written by GCHQ, the British version of the NSA. This is a dumbed down version of it. It does data encoding, base64, hexadecimals and URIs. If you're going to move files between systems, sometimes you can get errors when you do the copy paste. So sometimes it's better practice to convert that into base64 first, copy the base64 string, and then decode that whenever you get it back onto the other system. That can help preserve the integrity of the data. But if we type in, please subscribe here and click encode, you can see we end up with this weird string of text. And if we copy that and clear everything and then paste it back in and we choose decode, you can see you end up with please subscribe. Don't be confused with encryption. This is not encryption. <laughs> this is completely readable by everyone. Obfuscated files. This is a little bit more advanced. I haven't had the chance to test this one fully yet. Uh, obfuscation in malware, for example, is when the malware author doesn't just write a nice, clean, simple, well-commented piece of code. They make it really hard and they jumble up all of the file names and the variable names and they cut them in half and they do all these weird and wacky things so that when you try and read the file, if you get a copy of the malware, it's really hard to understand what the heck is going on. So this is to do with obfuscated files. Potentially this allow, allows us to reverse some of that. I'm not too sure. I need to go and have a play with it. A hash generator. Hi, my name is Gary. Get the hash. That is the MD5 hash of that string. Pretty handy. You might come across hashes when you're looking at passwords and you want to try and figure out what they are. Crackstation will certainly help, which is what is linked below. So you could take Let's just put password in here, get the MD5 hash for it. So there is password, paste it in here. I am not a robot, crack. There we go, perfect match, MD5 result is password. So if you're using password as your password, please stop. Exploit feed RSS, this is cool to have because you can click right here and this is an RSS feed for all the exploits that are available on exploit db in this example so we could just sit here and look at the date 23rd of march 2023 we can just keep an eye on exploits this is a good one remote code execution in bitbucket version 7 if you were a pen tester and you're on a job 
and it has Bitbucket version 7, you might want to pay attention to this exploit. MSM Venom Builder, this is really cool. So if you're using Metasploit and you want to use MS Venom payloads, they are infamously hard to type. You can see at the bottom here is an example of an MS Venom payload. They're really long, next to impossible to remember unless you work at Rapid7, in which case they probably have it tattooed down their arms. But we can just come in here, put in our IP address, and you can see it all changes down below. Architecture x86, port number 444, port lead. Bad characters, platform, PHP. Yeah, it's it's cool. Hit copy and off you go. And then if you open up these, it gives you all the other commands that you're gonna need to use, like the multi-handler to catch it. So it's nice. And then the last page is where you can read about the two students creating the app, uh, Ludovic and Riyad. I hope I'm saying those names. Apologies, team, if I'm not. You can send them some money on PayPal. You can contribute to the project and submit bugs and they give some credits to some people down below. Oh, it has a dark mode, winner. And if we open up a new tab here and in the top right, I'll click the little hat. It has a pop-up mode as well. So if you don't want the full screen experience, you can just get this pop-up mode. If you do want full screen, you click that button there and it goes to what we were just looking at. And then pop-up mode, I believe, opens up its own little window like this. So that is it. That's Hack Tools. I wish I had known about that when I was doing my OSCP. That would have made life a little bit easier. Go check it out.